welcome to Alpha Military TV. Thanks for tuning in once again. My name is Richard Saunders. Now, we've got a rifle on review today, and I have to say we've been a little bit slow to the uh, the game in this one because quite a few other people have reviewed it already. But, you know, we thought we'd have our say. We'd throw our hat in the ring as well um, and give you a view. So this is the FX uh, Maverick. It is the uh, VP edition, which denotes the fact that it has uh, an aluminium air bottle. Now, this rifle has um, generated a lot of interest in the market, not least because uh, of FX's very popular, very su successful impact model. And this rifle kind of looks a little bit like an FX impact, uh, but is priced significantly cheaper. These rifles, all FX rifles, are distributed in the UK by the Sportsman Gun Centre. And Sportsman Gun Centre will sell this for around about 1250 quid. Um, and that compares to, I think, sort of nearer 1700, 1800 pounds, something like that, for the FX Impact. So it's quite significantly cheaper. Uh, and yet, it has a lot of uh, enhancements and features that the Impact doesn't have. Now, we'll talk about those in a little while. Now, the reason why this rifle is a little bit cheaper, or quite a bit cheaper, than the Impact is. I believe because the impact is quite a complex rifle to make. There's a lot of linkages, a lot of uh, seals and what have you that have to be set up just so for it to operate. Um, and as a result of that, FX puts a lot of time into each construction um, and, and quality testing each rifle to make sure it's right. Um, now, I'm not saying that they rush these out of the door by any stretch of the imagination, they don't. But this rifle, the Maverick, is based on the FX Wildcat chassis. Uh, which is a lot simpler to produce, a lot more simpler in terms of engineering, um, and also means that they can produce it that little bit quicker. Now, that's not to say that this is basically a, um, a tarted up FX Wildcat. It's not, you know, there's a lot of very innovative, innovative features on this, as I said before. Now the rifle overall, uh, without a silencer, is 810 millimeters. It weighs around about 3.4 kilos. What's that, just about, not quite seven and a half pounds. So it's quite compact. Um, and, um, you know, very handy to walk around with. And as I said before, a lot of the, the, the components on this, or some of the components, um, are recognizable from the FX uh, Wildcat and, uh, and the Crown as well. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk through the rifle from back to front. So let's start at the back then. Um, you have this height adjustable uh, butt pad here, which is adjustable by slacking off this little um, thumb screw here and moving it um, up and down. Um, it's kind of reminiscent of, a, of an FX Impact butt pad, um, the same kind of um, design. The look and feel is slightly different. It's, it's got this nice kind of ventilated effect, which is nice, and you've got some finger grooves here uh, to help you use uh, the butt pad as a, as a bit of a handle. Now, somewhat weirdly, the safety catch is right at the very back of the rifle. It's right back here. And I know I'm a fussy devil because I'm always whining about safety catches that are too near the trigger. And this can't be any further away, pretty much, um, which is a good thing, but it's a little bit sort of, you know, counterintuitive. Um, you do get used to it, I have to say, but it's a little bit weird because a lot of people moan about uh, bull pups having uh, the cocking action right back here. You're sort of poking around behind your ear to cock the rifle. And the Maverick, like the Impact, does away with that by having the cocking handle in a nice comfortable position down here, but then they've gone and put the safety catch back here anyway. Also right by the safety catch, and we'll show you these things in a bit of close up. Up here is a power power wheel. Now this is a, a clickable um, power wheel. Um, it adjusts the hammer, and that also and that adjusts the amount of time that the valve is open for. Now it has seven settings, one through seven, and it also has an adjust setting which you can poke an Allen key into and make real fine uh, fine tune adjustments to your setup. Um, now the 12 foot pound rifles also have a power wheel as well, um, but obviously the, the, the range of power on the 12 foot pound version is not the same as it is on the base of your rifle, but it does come in handy if you're shooting in barns or, or enclosed spaces. 
Now the magazine fits into this slot up here. That's the magazine. We'll show you how to fill that. Um, it's similar to the uh, FX Impact um, magazine, but smaller and, it, and is in actual fact the magazine that is used on the FX Wildcat and on the FX Crown as well. Takes 18 shots in 2.2 and 22 shots in 177. Now that is cocked by the, the side lever up here, which has this sort of drop down biathlon handle. Um, very nice side lever, beautifully engineered and weighted. Um, very smooth as well, and it drives that magazine. Now you can see up here, uh, as an FAC model, this rifle has the, the power plenum, which is the larger capacity plenum. And just below that is the pistol grip. Now the pistol grip is uh, a rubberized AR style pistol grip. Very, very comfortable. And, and like quite a few other features on this rifle, it is interchangeable with aftermarket parts. So you can get aftermarket uh, pistol grips, uh, butt pads, uh, bag risers, all of that kind of good stuff. And people are going to love that. You have a cheek piece up here, which um, has some adjustment in it. Um, it's very comfortable, avoids you having to put your face on any metal work. And it does set you up nicely um, to address the scope. And now the scope I've got on here is the new Zeiss Conquest V4. It's the new model that parallaxes down to uh, 10 meters. And I reviewed this on the, on the channel a little while ago, really loved it. And I haven't given it back yet because I haven't asked for it back. So I'm going to hang on to it for as long as I possibly can. Uh, but that is mounted on a 20 MOA uh, Picatinny rail. Plenty of, of, of room there for you to get really good uh, eye adjustment uh, to the scope. Now moving forward, you have obviously the trigger. Now it's a nice trigger, very, very good trigger, fully adjustable, two stages, uh, some post and shoe trigger, nice trigger. Now, as with all bullpups, um, bullpups are defined by the fact that the, the trigger is forward of the, the breech back here. So as a result, there, needs, there has to be some linkage between the trigger and the breech back here. And in some bullpups, that can make the whole process of firing the trigger a little bit vague. Um, now the trigger on this is, is very, very good, don't get me wrong. It's probably not quite as good as the trigger on the FX Impact, if I'm honest, but that's not to say that this is a bad trigger by any stretch of the imagination. Moving forward still, you have a pressure gauge up here, which will give you uh, a sense of the um, of, of how much air you've got left in your in your bottle. This is the 400 cc aluminium bottle, and it takes a, like all all models takes a, uh, a 250 bar fill, and we'll see how many shots uh, this gives, but I would expect it to give well over 100 shots in this FAC um, format and well over 500, if not 600 shots in 12 foot pound uh, mode as well. You also have a, a couple of uh, Picatinny rails. Uh, there's one underneath here, one on the side, on either side for um, bipods, torches, uh, and, and other accessories as well. And then on the other side of the rifle, up here, you have a, a cap that pulls off and reveals the uh, quick fill valve up here. Um, it's not quite as elegant a, uh, a design piece of design as the FX Impact, but you know what? It does the job fantastically well. Now then, let's talk about the most significant uh, components or innovations on this rifle. And that is the fact that it has not one, but two regulators. Why would you need two regulators? Well, you've got one that is located sort of up in this area up, up here, sort of the neck of the bottle. And you have this second one, which is back here. And the, 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 the dual um, regular configuration is slightly different than the 12 foot pound rifle. The second one is, is further back towards the back of the rifle. Uh, and, and basically the idea is that <clears throat> you've got 250 bar of pressure in this, this air tank up here. And that's an awful lot of pressure to be dealing with. And you're asking an awful lot of a single regulator to manage that pressure 
from the bottle through the regulator into the firing action. So the idea with, with two regulators is that you have this kind of um, sort of um, dual management system, if you like, that one regulator takes a bit of pressure, channels it down to a second regulator, and that's a regulator that is used to actually power the shot. Um, now, in practice, what that means is that this, this setup does away with a phenomenon called uh, regulator creep, which is where you will get very slight variances in power and, and pressure, uh, which will obviously affect very slightly the consistency shot to shot. So th this, uh, this dual system does away with that. Now on the FAC version, as you'll see, there is an adjustment for the, for the regulator, uh, the second reg regulator back here, and then, oh, I don't know if you can see that, there's a little hole in here, which help, which enables you to adjust the regulator on the, the pressure on the other regulator. Now, like lots of FXs, you can have a whale of a time um, making various adjustments um, using the power wheel and the regulator pressure on the FAC versions to really get your setup uh, working correctly. Um, obviously on the 12 foot pound rifles, although there are the two regulators, you don't have the ability to adjust them the same way as you do with the FAC one. Right, oh, we should talk about barrels. So the barrel on the, the, VC, uh, on the VP is a 600 millimeter smooth twist X barrel. Um, and like many other uh, FX rifles, certainly the Impact, you can swap this barrel out for different calibers. You'll need to change the pellet probe in the magazine as well, obviously. Uh, different twist rates as well. Uh, and also you, and you can put different liners in the barrel as well. Um, it is shrouded for sort of half its length from sort of the, the front here through to the muzzle. And that does a reasonable job of cutting down the muzzle blast. But you want to gonna, you will want to put on a, a silencer because it does have quite a bump to do that. Right, we are going to uh, zoom in on a few of these features and then if I don't get blown away, we'll put some targets out and see how it shoots. Well, the magazine is nice and simple to uh, to fill up. You see, it's got this clear plastic uh, faceplate, and there's a black lug down here. You just need to rotate that round 180 degrees to release that faceplate. And then, as you can see, the chambers are inside. Now, this uh, inner inner drum here is uh, sprung. So, what you need to do is just rotate that round with your fingers anti-clockwise as far as it will go. And then when you've done that, just put a pellet in nose first, right at the very top hole up here. Hopefully you can see that one in there. And that will, that will hold that spring under tension. And then it's just a simple case of filling up the rest of the chambers. And you can do them in any order you like, to be perfectly honest. You don't have to sort of follow, follow them around. Now this will take, 18 shots in 2-2, two, two, 22 in 177. I don't know what the 25 and 30 caliber um, magazine capacities are, but obviously going to be slightly less. But we'll definitely give you enough shots for a session, be it out hunting, on the range, target shooting or whatever. So all right, so once you've got all your pellets in the magazine, 
take your faceplate now if you the faceplate will only go on in one position and there are a couple of little lugs down here if you put it in if you try and put it on back to front those lugs just won't match up with the slots on the faceplate so put it on there obviously with the point matching up with the point on the main cartridge and then just rotate that plastic lug around again to the bottom to hold that plate in place. Inserting the magazine is uh, straightforward as well. Also, you make sure your rifle is on uh, the safety catch is on safe. Hold back the side lever, and then with the clear plate facing the back of you, just locate it in the breech. There's no uh, secondary cap at all, and just push that. Uh, side lever forward. And when it comes to removing the empty magazine, uh, there's no release catch or release button. You just literally pull back the side lever and pull the magazine out again. Filling the Maverick is nice and straightforward. As I said before, you've got a, a cap on the, uh, the neck of the bottle up here, which uh, you'll need to just pull off. Put that somewhere safe. Attach your airline straight onto the, the fill valve. There are no probes or anything like that with this rifle. And then you're going to give it a 250 bar fill. I haven't quite got 250 bar in this bottle, I don't think. It's not far off. That should do us. Close off the bottle. Lead off that line. And then don't forget to pull your, put your cap back on again. And then you can see here, that is your fill pressure gauge just there. Well, I'm down at Reading Air Target Shooting Club. I'm on the long range, so I've set a, set a target out at 55 meters. It's really blowy down here, um, so I'm not quite sure how good the group is gonna be, but hopefully we'll get a few shots on target. Now I've got the rifle set up on power setting two, which on this rifle um, equates to about 31 and a half foot pounds, which is enough to push the 16 grain uh, air arms Diablo fill pellets out at around about 920, 930 feet per second. So let's see how we get on. see when that wind drops um, they are pellet on pellet as soon as the wind picks up it's blowing them out again excuse is over empty. Well, uh, um, the wind, I think, has slightly spoiled what was a very good group. As I said before, when the wind drops, it's pellet on pellet. Every time the wind picks up, it's drifting left and right. But um, we're going to have a look and see how we got on. Right, well, let's have a look then. So this is... Um, I should have said these are shots taken at 55 meters and it is pretty blowy down here to be perfectly honest. Um, now that is 
probably I'd say an inch there's one a little bit further over to the right here um, all I would say within a kiln zone on most quarry that's 10 shots and I'd, I would imagine probably nine of them are within an inch maybe a smidgen more than that uh, now that um, as I say was at 55 meters and that was using air arms diablo fill pellets in 5.52 caliber well there you have it that is the fx maverick vp edition with the aluminium bottle i have to say very impressive rifle for the price you know this is available from sportsman gun center for 1250 pounds you know this is a top top performance rifle packed full of innovative features not least that dual regulator system uh, makes it very accurate very very consistent um, and a real pleasure to shoot as well now, um, as I said before, this is the FAC version. I have absolutely no doubt whatsoever that the 12 foot pound rifles won't be just as impressive as this. Now, if you like the video, if you found it useful, please give us a like, hit the subscribe button and take a look at our other videos. And if you'd like more information on the FX range and a whole bunch of other air gunning topics, uh, you can find out more on our website, which is www.alphamilitaria.com. Thanks for watching.